Yeah. Hi, I'm Christy with Film Inquiry. Uh, how are you doing? Oh, great. I like your background. Uh, that's Thank cool. you. It's, is the, Christ uh, the Christy Theater? Yes. It is. Yes. Cool. This is where all the, <laughs> the movies happen for me. Um, no, I appreciate it. I'm a dork and I kind of wear it on my sleeve. Um, so thank you so much for this. Congratulations on the movie. I actually just watched it like right before this. So I'm still kind of wrapped in the little anxious <laughs> ball that you guys. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> no worries. That's just me anyway. Um, but, you know, this was a very different um, kind of character for you, which was really exciting and refreshing to see. And you are tremendously good in this film, just so you know. Um, and I love to see that. Um, but what was it about this role that made you decide to kind of take this like well, something about um, the character. Yeah, sorry, I didn't know if you can hear me. <laughs> yes, no, no, no. Thank you so much, Christy. Yes, I mean, to me, this was like a gift sent to me, you know, because the movie, when I read it, seemed like somebody had just written down a nightmare that they had just had. You know, it didn't feel like a completely logical storyline, but it felt like an emotionally logical storyline. Like, why is this person behaving in this way? As an actor, I completely understood it. Oh, yeah, this person has experienced such deep shame, rage, you know, questioning their own sexuality, their own masculinity, uh, their own physique. Um, and, uh, you know, it seemed like completely logical to me from an emotional perspective. Of course, they would go and attack this stranger in the bathroom. Of course, they would leave their wife when she's pregnant because this person is going through an emotional experience. That makes sense to me. Um, but logically, it felt like a fever dream. You know, it felt like one of these movies that's like a, a fever dream, you know, where it almost feels like all of these awful things are happening to this person. This person is doing all these awful things and the repercussions aren't exactly always what you would expect. And so to me, it felt like, oh, an amazing gift. I wish I could play parts like this all the time. They just don't come around, you know, as frequently as more normal guys drinking at bar. <laughs> normal guys drinking at bar. Yeah. Um, no, I love that. I love that you phrased it as, as a nightmare because um, it really is. I mean, and a fever dream, there's even a scene where you're screaming in the car. It's almost like you can't wake up. Um, from this yes. one. Yes, exactly. I got to do two other movies that were like fever dreams. One was called The Double, which I played two characters and one is like, and 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 they're like kind of, you know, a predators toward each other. And it just felt like a fever dream. It was like nothing was logical, but everything felt real. And then I did this movie, The Art of Self-Defense, where a guy I played joins like kind of another male cult. And again, it felt like, oh yeah, none of this would happen. And yet, of course, it all would happen because you're, you're seeing the movie through this character's kind of psychologically traumatized perspective. Yeah, logical and neological somehow. That's a perfect way to put it, exactly. Yeah, um, so do you like to challenge yourself when you're taking on new roles? Like, you know, some of the phrases that you said, I I just, I think that's awesome that you wanna take something that's, um, I don't know, maybe potentially terrifying to somebody else and, and take a role on like this. Is that what you seek normally when you're looking at scripts? Yes, they're few and far between. So like, I don't like normally get sent stuff like this. So when I do, I just feel very thankful and try to do as good a job as I can. But, um, you know, this part is not exactly that intimidating to me because it's like kind of all the stuff I feel I can do well. Like I'm a very like emotional person who often feels like I'm trying to stifle my emotions because my character's on a normal set wouldn't be weeping in every scene. But that's how I feel. I would be most comfortable. Sorry, that was confusing. All I guess I mean is that like this movie and the character's extreme feelings are like all the things I feel I can do well. The things I feel like I do less well are like playing normal dad because it just feels to me like, I just don't know that world. I'm not very normal a dad. And so to me, I'm more of an, I don't know. I don't feel like I fit into the mainstream society so much. So playing a movie like this is like cathartic for me. It feels like, oh, right, of course, this is how I would want to act every day. I'd want to scream and cry every day but you just don't do that that much unless you're in, you know, theater or something that allows you for that. And I've done a lot of plays that allow me to do that, but no one, you know, sees them. I'm sure that's not true. Um, but that's why, you know, we, we do love to see you in films because, you know, you're not the guy at bar, you know, um, so we appreciate that. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, and so what did you do to, to prep for this role? I mean, other than maybe staying with a cult or something, um, did you, <laughs> Um, yeah, that's really funny. Uh, like, um, yeah, but I mean, I, there were like very, I mean, yeah, I got, I just remember like, I, I actually did like, I played a Hasidic Jew in a movie and I basically like joined this very insular community and they let me in and kind of brought me into the fold, which was 
really amazing. That didn't happen on this movie. Um, but I did have to like, you know, I was like going to the gym every day. It was probably like for two years on it because we, the movie kept getting pushed back. So the movie said like, oh, we're delaying for six months. Oh, now we have to wait till the winter. And so I'd like, you know, have to like rebuild myself up a lot, which was just physically demanding. Emotionally, the stuff felt like very intuitive to me. Like I grew up feeling inadequate about my, you know, body and masculinity and still feel all of those feelings. As a child, I was like, you know, in a school that was really sports heavy. It was not like an artsy kind of school. So I felt like I was constantly, you know, all the guys that, you know, like were popular were the big kids or whatever. So, you know, all those feelings of inadequacy came quite easily to me, unfortunately. And then, you know, and there was some other like technical things to prepare for, you know, what is the character going to look like? What is he going to sound like? Can I please interview people who live up in that area? So I can not only hear the pacing of the way they speak, but the phrases that they use, they use slang phrases I would never use that are specific both to like upstate New York and also to this world of kind of bro culture, gym culture. And so I would listen, so I did interviews with people and then just would play their recordings in my head during the days, during the nights, right before shooting, sometimes in the middle of takes to get myself back into the voice. So it's like, that's kind of more technical stuff, but it ultimately does inform the emotional stuff too. Yeah, no, and that's incredibly fascinating. I think um, our readers and listeners would love to hear about that, honestly, just because you really physically do take on a very um, a different look than you really have in any other film. Yeah. Um, and you played Lex Luthor, so, I mean. <laughs> yeah, so oh, that's always um, the goal, I would say, for actors. But again, we just don't get sent. I mean, every actor you might criticize for playing a similar role over and over, I imagine, and I'm sure, sure they want to do another thing, but don't get sent it, you know? Yeah. Have you thought, I, I know that you um, have gotten behind the camera and that's something that you are, you know, probably I'm sure strive to continue to do. Um, yeah. Have you thought about creating a part for yourself that allows you to kind of get those, that opportunity? Yeah. I mean, I just acted in a movie that I made that we're finishing the editing this month and, you know, uh, Kieran Culkin has like the better part. I play more of a version kind of like me but it was because I knew the movie would be tough to get financed because of the nature of it. It's an international big in scope kind of movie. And so I thought, okay, well, let me at least play the part that people would normally think of me for and cast somebody great to play the other part. And uh, then I knew it could get made. So sometimes that's it too. You know, oh, this movie can get made if I play this certain thing. I wrote a play that I got to perform in New York for months and then in the West End for months. And then we were about to go to Broadway. Um, and that was called The Spoils. And my character was like Ralphie and Manadrome. And that was my favorite part I got to play. And as a part I wrote during like a kind of, you know, psychologically difficult period for myself. So I was expressing all of those uncomfortable things. And the character was just a toxic, dangerous, crazed person. So I love that. I, I would do that every night if given the opportunity. It was the most cathartic thing. And Manadrome is also very cathartic. I would like to do that far more than you might imagine, given that I'm playing more normal characters. It's just that's what's normally made. Yeah, no, I, I love this. It's been very fascinating. I'm, I'm bummed that it's over. <laughs> I only have a minute left. Um, what can you tell us that you're doing next? Like what's uh, other than, you know, finishing the film you mentioned, um, what's next for you? Oh, yeah, thanks. Yeah, we have like another six weeks of, yes, post-production. And then uh, doing Now You See Me 3, which is another movie I love because I play a character that's quite different from me. He's kind of very confident showman. And I'm a very unconfident showman. Well, you you seem very confident Now You See Me. Clearly, oh. if there's a third one. <laughs> yes, of course, of course. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, well, thank, thank you. you so much for talking to me again. Congrats on the film. And um, I look forward to seeing what other parts you get. Um, so in the thank you so much.